Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how to make a histogram when you're given a sample or a data set. Okay? So, this will come up a lot in any basic intro statistics course. Here we go. Here's our sample, right, or our data set. Here are a couple things I've computed on the side to determine how many bins I'm going to have in my histogram. Okay? Uh, typically, there's no rule uh, for the number of bins you're going to create, but typically what you want to do is you want to get something where it gives it a good distribution and of, of the values in your sample. Okay, so what I did here is I got the total number of observations, the minimum observation, the value of the maximum observation, the range of our observations, which is just the maximum minus the minimum. And I chose, based on these guys, a bin width of 5. It looked appropriate to me. And if I choose a bin width of 5, and I'm almost ranging from 0 to 100, because 4 to 99, roughly 0 to 100, then 5 bins, a bin width of 5 would result in about 20 bins. This you could have chose 21 bins, 18 bins, 15 bins. You would still get it. Still wouldn't be right or wrong. It's just for our purposes here. I wanted to give you some idea that there is some thought behind choosing the number of bins. Okay. So once I chose 20 bins and a width of five, I started at zero because our minimum value is four, and I created the bins here. So anything from zero to five in our sample will fall into this bin, including 5. Okay, Anything from 5 to 10 in our sample will fall into this bin right here. And then all the way on down, anything from 95 to 100 would fall in the last bin. Okay, So now that we have that, that's kind of like our guide. But to feed Excel what it needs to count how many of our observations fall into each one of these bins, I actually have to give it only the top number in each bin, the upper limit of each bin. Okay, so in this case, 5, in this case, 10, in this case, 15, in this case, 20. And you see the pattern, it's the upper limit on each one of the bins. Okay, so this was more of a guide, so we see what we're doing here. This column is going to be used to calculate the frequency in each one of these bins it, from our sample. Okay, So I don't need to type all these down. Once I do one or two, I can just highlight them and then drag it down and auto, Excel will auto fill that Okay, going up by five. Okay, So here we see the last bin has an upper limit of 100 and we're set. Okay. Now Here's where the trick comes in. In order to get the frequency for these bins of this sample, we need to use what's called an array function. Okay, An array function is different than the typical functions that we use in Excel in that we highlight a group of cells or an array of cells, and then we go in the formula bar and we proceed to type the formula. Okay, In this case, I highlighted cells H3 to H22, then I went in the formula box and I'm going to type equals frequency, I'm going to open parentheses, and you see this is a function in Excel. It's got two parts. The first part is the data array, which is our sample. So we're just going to highlight our sample and I'm going to hit F4 because what F4 does is it puts dollar signs around that array and in effect it locks it or another word that comes up a lot to describe this is it absolutes it okay so it locks that comma the second thing is the bins array and that's what we did here which I explained so we're gonna highlight that bins array again we're gonna hit F4 and that's gonna lock it I'm gonna close the parentheses and now here instead of just hitting enter you got to be careful. You got to hit Shift, Control, Enter, and when you do that, it applies that formula to the entire range. Okay, so look at this. This is telling us that between zero and five, there are two observations. And if we look here, 
there's five, that's one, and here's a four, that's two. Now just picking another at random, 95 to 100, there's only one. So let's see if we could find that. There's 99, there's only one, and let's look, there's no other from 95 to 100. Okay, so this has worked properly for us. And now we have what we need to actually go ahead and make the chart, the histogram, okay? So now for this, we're gonna highlight the frequency column. We're gonna go to insert, column chart, pick the first type, and we're gonna get a chart, which is a histogram, but it's very crude, very ugly. We need to clean it up a bit. And so here's some chart techniques, okay? First of all, we don't need a legend, so you could just click on that and delete that. Second of all, in a histogram, you do not wanna have these gaps, okay? So in order to do that, right click on the bars, go to Format Data Series, and go to the Series Options, and move gap all the way to the left so that there's no gap. Click close and so we've taken care of that problem. The, another thing is the x-axis should actually would actually be more convenient if it had the bins there instead of just 1, 2, 3, 4 up to 20 which is Excel's default way of filling in an axis when you don't specify what you want. Okay, So click on it then right click on it Go to Format Axis, then go to Alignment. Let's change the angle so that when we do put in this longer form, it'll fit in cleanly. So I mean, something like that should be fine, okay? Because there's going to be a lot of information squeezed in here, right? and it's going to overlap each other okay so we could hit close now to actually get these bins on this axis we could go to design select data we go to the horizontal axis edit and now we can highlight this column and you see it's replaced 1 2 3 up to 20 with 0 to 5 5 to 10 10 to 15 which is much more clear than just a random array of numbers. Okay, now click OK, and we're almost there. Maybe one other thing, a few other things you might like to do is give a title to this chart, which would be in the layout, right? And maybe give an axis title. Let's just call it histogram for our purposes here. And let's also put in a y-axis, so vertical axis. And we can say axis title, vertical axis. And we'll call this frequency, because that's what it is. OK? So now we got a histogram. And these empty gaps in between mean it is it's not just random. Actually, what that means is there was nothing between 35 and 40 in our data set here, and there was nothing between 45 and 50, and nothing between 70 and 75. And you can check that by going back here, and you can also see that agrees with this column over here, with these three zeros. Okay? So that's how you create a histogram. I hope this was helpful. This will definitely come up, and using Excel to do this stuff is actually a pretty convenient and quick way. Um, so anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Practice, practice, practice. Comment. Let me know if there's any other things you want me to post up. And uh, subscribe to my page and like me. Thanks a lot. Bye.